would like to talk to you about what Mazen is doing for renewable energy. Mazen uh, is the Moroccan Agency for Sustainable Energy. Uh, it has multiple responsibilities and uh, I will be running through the slides just to present to you what Mazen is doing and more specifically what we are interested in and that is creating added value in Morocco through the National Renewable Energy Program. Speaking of the Renewable Energy Program, so I think uh, even the youngest of the audience still remembers that back in 2009 the price of uh, the oil barrel was so high that it was not a sustainable situation for Morocco, who is a net importer of oil uh, for its energy needs. So uh, back in 2009, uh, His Majesty the King has uh, enacted a new target for renewable energy installations in Morocco to bring the contribution to 42% of all uh, installed power uh, in Morocco. So it's a very amb ambitious role, uh, an uh, ambitious target for a country that had uh, a very small amount of renewable energy already installed. So in order to achieve this new target, the Moroccan Agency, initially it was the Moroccan Agency for Solar Energy was created back in 2010. Um, and soon after, the organization set to work to start the first, but also the biggest, uh, concentrated solar power plant in the world in Nor 1. And within uh, a few years, and because of the success that was met, the renewable energy target was raised to 52% by 2030. And almost five or six years after we started the whole program, we inaugurated, and they are, these are the pictures that you see uh, on the bottom here, the inauguration of NOR 1, and NOR 2 and NOR 3 are also in line to be inaugurated for next year. So what does that mean? So if you look at um, the energy mix in Morocco back in 2008, renewable was mostly hydro. There was no solar and no wind back in 2008. To go from this situation of 26% of renewable energy to 42% with a significant presence of solar energy and wind energy is a momentous effort. So you can look at it in two ways. One of, it, one of which is we're trying to reduce the dependence of Morocco in imported uh, energy sources and more specifically hydrocarbonates and uh, oil. But also we saw this as an opportunity to position Morocco in this technology field by creating more jobs and making Moroccan companies a first beneficiary of this new opportunity that was created by uh, the Moroccan vision. So in, in more concrete terms, uh, bringing the renewable energy participation to 42% means that you will be adding six gig of watt of new installed capacity. So this is the target for 2020, it's balanced. So it's two gig of solar, two gigs of wind, and two gigs of hydro. Uh, but the target for 52% in 2030 is something that is still being engineered as we, as we speak. And so Mazen has taken the position to be technology agnostic. So we look at all technologies and we evaluate the technologies based on their merits. We don't have a preset or, pre, or uh, preset preference for a particular technology. So when you look at the Mazen vision, which since uh, a couple of years back has become the Moroccan Agency for Sustainable Energy, not only solar, is obviously electric, electricity production by clean electricity production. But also we see this as a great opportunity for the Moroccan industry to participate in this national revolution. We see an opportunity to develop the communities where the solar plants are implemented. Uh, and for example, in Warzazet, uh, there, there has been a considerable improvement in the quality of life of people around the North Warzazet plant. But also, we see this as an opportunity for research and development and training. And I'll be spending a few more slides to specify what do we call research and development. I think it's important to have an idea about scale. So if you look at the Norwars as that plant, uh, we have a team that scours all of Morocco to identify the best spots for all types of renewable energy, whether it's solar or wind. And they have multiple criteria to fulfill. Some of them is that the land used for renewable energy should not be taken from, for example, agricultural land, or it should not be inhabited in a significant way. 
And so the first site that was identified is the Nur, is the Warzazat, so we called it Nur. Nur is light in Arabic. And it's a 3,000 hectares complex which has been divided up to four plants. So this is the fir first one, NOR1. One. It's 160 megawatt CSP parabolic trough. It is completed in operation, and it turns out that it, this plant is operating at or above what it was designed for. When we know that some of the sites uh, elsewhere in the world take three, four, five years to reach their optimal performance, uh, this site has been performing at above this rating 14 months after it was commissioned. The NOR2 is a similar technology, parabolic trough as well, but a bigger capacity. And NOR3 is a new technology. It's the first tower that we will be having in Morocco for 150 megawatts. So one of the main reasons, so many people come back to the question is PV is dropping in price. Why are you choosing CSP and not taking advantage of PV? Uh, and the reason is very simple. In Morocco, when you look at the curve of the load curve or the demand, most of the unfulfilled demand that costs the most is the one that comes in the evening after the sun sets. And so you need a renewable energy that is storable and dispatchable. PV with batteries compared to CSP with molten salts is a very easy choice. So CSP with molten salts is much cheaper uh, and has the scale at the utility level to be storing that type of capacities. And so the first site is a three-hour storage, the second one is a seven to eight-hour storage, and the third one is a seven to eight-hour storage. We complement the sites which will be addressing the evening peak with a smaller PV site of 70 megawatts, which will be addressing the midday peak. And so the renewable energy plan in Morocco has been targeting the local need and addressing the local shortcomings. And I would say true to our vision, within these mega scale type of sites, we have a 240 hectares R&D platform right in the middle between the sites. And this allows us to partner and test multiple renewable energy. We think that renewable energy is not a technology that has reached its optimum in terms of technology development. It's a technology that will continue to see cost reduction and improvement in performance and quality over time, and we would like to be an actor in this, not just a net importer of, of technologies. So um, now we will focus on, on R&D uh, because of the conference that we are in. So what we see R&D is, it's not a standalone activity. It's not something that you do just to have a specific publication or to be indexed in Scopus or in whatever. So what we think is uh, R&D has to be looked at in an end-to-end -end holistic value chain approach, which means that R&D should be creating value for the country, not only uh, scientific publications. And so what we see R&D for Mazen is a way of accelerated path for industrialization of applied research in uh, renewable energy. So typically, all of the R&D that we are doing is done in partnership with Moroccan industry to allow an easier path for industrialization. So if you're looking at the way that R&D is characterized around the world, we believe that our R&D is more of a market pull than a university push. So we start with a problem, we see an opportunity for industri industrialization, and we accelerate. Um, so the next slide is a standard uh, maturity ma matrix for technology readiness level. Um, there are multiple actors that act on the TRL2 to TRL4 um, within Morocco, but also around the world. So as a university research team, for example, you would come up with a concept, you write a paper, you submit it, you get funding, and then you develop a prototype and you prove it in the lab. In our case, we start from that prototype. So what we are interested in is two things. Large scale, so we're talking about things that are at industrial scale, and we are doing in operational environment testing. So these are the two major things that attract us. If you're developing a new technology, if you've proven it in the lab, we'll be happy to consider it, 
if you see an opportunity for this industry to be, for this innovation, sorry, to be competitive and to be scaled up and also to be operating in real conditions. We think that this is a gap that very few institutions in Morocco at least address because this is what is called around the world the death valley of, of innovation and technology and we are very happy to address and offer a bridge between innovation that is out of the lab and into commercialization. Um, so in order for, for Mazan to, to be actually able to address and offer an opportunity for in, an pathway for industrialization, we have an R&D platform that actually can do multiple things. So if, if you would like to test uh, new types of mirror, new types of parabolic troughs, towers, you need a demonstration uh, space that can accommodate multiple hectares. And this is what Mazan offers. Typically, we are not interested in starting research from scratch, so we are very happy to partner. And as I will be showing in the last few slides, we've already established some strategic partnerships um, because we believe that research should be collaborative. I mean, we are beyond the phase where people lock themselves up in a laboratory. We don't, we're not doing anything military, so open innovation is the way to go. And if we can partner to accelerate things, then this is, uh, this is what we are interested in. If we can't collaborate, we are also happy to offer what we call commercial services. So if you have your technology and you are not interested in collaborating, we'll also be very happy to host uh, your demonstration uh, in our platform as we've done with others. What we see is that CSP in particular and uh, renewable energy in, uh, in general is a technology that would require and that will be facing multiple types of environments. So we, are, we started our R&D platform here in Nor Warzazat, uh, but we believe that the conditions in Nor Layoun or Nor Bujdor, which are on the seaside in a more des desert environment, will be a little different than what you see in terms of environment at the Nor Warzazat. And so what we envision is a network of demonstration platforms that will be addressing multiple cases uh, for, for applications. And some, some of the technologies that are well suited for this type of environment might not be for this type of environment and vice versa. And so we don't see a one technology win all scenario. We see multiple technologies that will be better fitted for multiple environments. So if we go back to the Norwar Zazat, so um, this uh, blueprint has been designed in collaboration with our partners from DLR. Uh, we have just started to set up a, a number of demonstrators here, but as you can see, we have uh, a lot of space for at-scale demonstrations. Uh, we have uh, also partners from, I uh, see uh, our colleagues from Cleanergy from Sweden, where we have a demonstrator around here. But we envision that within the next few years, we will have multiple technologies being demonstrated and monitored in real time, in real conditions, to see which technology is actually uh, the best for this type of environment. Um, this is some of, uh, of the same, so I will be skipping to, through this because we are a bit short of time. And I would like to illustrate the type of partnership that we envision for Mazen R&D. We already have a few uh, externally funded projects. You can always do R&D if you want to put your own money and you can do whatever you want. But if you want to convince international partners to fund what you're doing, then you need to prove that you're adding value. And we think that this is some of the demonstrations uh, of, of this added value that Mazen R&D is bringing. So for example, this is a project where Mazen was partnering with a number of institutions, whether national or international, to create a network of renewable energy research centers that can collaborate and bring uh, knowledge transfer to Moroccan institutions. So this project was concluded successfully. Um, we think this is the type of projects where we, uh, where we think is a, it's a building stone, it's a milestone for uh, other collaborations to, to happen. A still active project is the RESLAG. So for example, in this particular project, we're interested in thermal uh, renewable energy storage. And so there was a, so an active partnership with, again, some of the same, uh, we're seeing a lot of DLRs on our slides, so I guess we're, 
we're quite uh, good friends so far in research. Uh, but this is a diff completely different topic. We're looking at the, um, all of the uh, industry waste and specifically the steel industry waste as being uh, a means to store thermal energy and we're conducting collaboratively research to see how we can address this. So we're not specifically looking at one technology, we're looking at multiple technologies, but the challenges are the commonly agreed to challenges that uh, are interesting for the CSP. And one of them is storage. And uh, R&D in this field always looks to reduce costs, be more competitive. I think R&D will continue to drive as long as we have not reached a competitive stance compared to natural gas, for example. Uh, another project, and this is a project that looks also into CSP, and it looks to reduce the consumption of water for CSP plants. Turns out that the places, the best places for CSP technologies are also some of the driest places around the world. And so uh, we're always interested in, in evaluating and looking into technologies that reduces water usage, whether it's for cooling, uh, of the power block or whether it's for uh, cleaning of mirrors. And so this particular project is still ongoing. So there are a number of innovations that looks into hybrid cooling of power blocks or completely dry cooling of power blocks. And this is research that are still ongoing. So I know this is a CSP workshop, but I will allow myself to look at something else. So we are also looking at another, another type of concentrated solar it's not to produce heat, but to concentrate uh, the, the sun for a PV conversion. And so we have a very active collaboration with, C with the CPV provider in uh, the Japanese comp company Sumitomo. And this is also a very nice project where you see how things evolve from small scale to larger scale. Um, so initially we hosted uh, one of those trackers uh, in our area for a few months, for a couple of years. The results were so satisfactory that they moved from a single tracker in our location all the way to a one megawatt implementation with a $5 million for this technology. And I can tell you that there has been a lot of lessons learned from this particular first implementation to go back to the 33 trackers, whether it's cost reduction in terms of metallic structure, whether it's assembly of cells, so we were very happy uh, in a previous life, I also championed the possibility to assemble the cell. So this is a microelectronic assembly in a clean room that was done for the first time in Morocco. We're very happy to see that some of the cells that were assembled in Morocco are still fully functioning. So there is a strong technology transfer opportunity that is, that is, bring, that is brought with uh, renewable energy deployment. And the nice thing that we have in Madan is that we are perfectly aligned between uh, what we fund in R&D and the market opportunity that we create by our markets. And so we think that uh, this is a good example and we are uh, hoping to see more larger scale, megawatt type of scale projects for renewable energy and innovative technologies to come down. Some of the strategic partnerships that I was uh, speaking of, so we, uh, are, uh, we have a strategic partnership with CEA in France uh, that addresses the aging and obviously you can do aging modeling in a lab in Grenoble unless you have something to back it up and to correlate results with, the, with what's happening in, in Morocco, then it's not very credible. Uh, we also have a partnership with uh, Masir in Morocco, which is a research and R&D dedicated center for also uh, dust effect and understanding uh, environmental conditions. Uh, I will uh, not say much about this because we have multiple talks about the Heliostat project, which also is a very nice illustration of the type of collaboration we can set up between Mazen, Moroccan companies, and international partners. Um, just one slide on uh, CSP industrial integration. Um, so we have conducted multiple studies, uh, and we are trying to see where lies the best opportunities for industrial integration. So there are a couple of, this is, you can't put a scale on this. This is a subjective evaluation of what we consider to be a potential for local manufacturing from high to low, and the amount of investment that would be required. Obviously, the higher the amount, 
and the lowest the potential. So if you're up here, it's a uphill battle. It's a complicated, uh, I would say, undertaking for for us. So we will not be starting by, for example, designing a receiver or an HTF or a cell, for that matter. But all of these. Uh, have been actually successfully addressed by multiple Moroccan companies, so we'll be seeing a few of them. Jet Energy is here and will be presenting. Um, the uh, AIC Metallurgy will also be here and will be presenting. And so I don't want to take uh, more of their presentation, but you really see an illustration where Mazen, by its posture and positioning, created a market opportunity that allowed private actors to invest and these private actors were actu actually be able to address the building of the NOR plant. So just a, just a number for a industrial landscape that had no companies working in renewable energy, the first plant that we've built in Morocco were, was able to achieve a 30% industrial integration locally. So 30% of all of the orders for building the NOR 1 plant went to Moroccan companies unless you have a clearly a clear vision and the right incentives for this to happen, uh, it does not happen on its own. And we have done this on a competitive basis, so there was no uh, requirement for the bidders to take Moroccan companies, and so this is one of, I would say, one of the biggest achievements of Mazen. It's always easy to spend money in port technologies. It's a different challenge to convince Moroccan companies to invest in a technology and participate in that, in that building. Um, I will probably leave you with that and be happy to take any questions if you have any.